Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over the Studio One stock plugin, Multiband Dynamics. We've all done dynamic processing before, but you may be new to multiband dynamic processing. Multiband dynamic processing, or just multiband dynamics or multiband compression, is being able to hone a compressor to a certain area of frequencies. Built into Studio One is multiband dynamics, giving you up to five different frequency bands that you can compress differently. Let's dive into the DAW and take a look at multiband dynamics. So here we are inside of Studio One, and we're gonna take a look at the multiband dynamics. We'll very quickly go over all of the controls and everything you see within the plugin. Then we'll do a couple examples to show you what this can actually do. So let's start from left to right, top to bottom. Right here is the input meters coming into multiband dynamics. So when we play some signal, Everything that's up on top is the input into this multiband compressor. It's not just a compressor though, that's why it's called dynamics, but we'll get to that later. The bottom section here is the output after either your gain reduction or amplification. Again, multiband dynamics. Something else I wanna talk about in this display here is it's color coded. So anything that has more of a red tint to it is gain reduction, where anything with a green tint to it is actually amplification. Right now in our lows, you can see that it's getting a little bit of pink. If I just very quickly select low and turn my threshold way down, you can see it starts to slam it into this pink red color. If I put this back to normal, but actually start to increase the output gain, it goes green. Green amplification, red reduction. Moving down a little, you'll see L, LM, M, HM, and H. These are the five separate frequency bands that you can manipulate inside multiband dynamics. And this is how you can select which band you want the next area, this area to the right, to be affected by the dynamics. And this can change independently per band, or you can have them all linked, and we'll get to that. Moving down further, you have M, S, and a little bypass. This does exactly what you think it does. It mutes that frequency band, it solos that frequency band, or it bypasses the compression of that frequency band. The mute, solo, and bypass controls are available on all five bands, and that's why you have five sets of them right down here. Then next to each section of mute and solo is this little pot right here, and this allows you to change the crossover frequency for the multiband dynamics. So right now, this low frequency is 80 hertz and below, everything below 80 hertz. I can rotate this up and now change the band crossover to maybe something higher. If I wanted to, I could actually turn this all the way down, and now I'm stuck with a four band multiband dynamic processor. I've just taken the band out. Instead of processing it, now I have just fewer bands. The same can be said if we go all the way up. We can push all of the other bands out, and we now have just a standard compressor. This is looking at the entire frequency spectrum, but we want multibands for a reason. Heading all the way down the line, we can now go to this little area right here where it says range low, range high, and metering. Range low is the bottom of the visible spectrum in the graphical area up here. And you have a few choices, minus 120 dB, all the way up to minus 12. So it's a very small range. And that is based on minus 12, the low, versus the high range. This is currently set to zero, but I can have it as plus 12 as the largest. So now I'm looking at a dynamic frequency band of 24 dB, 12 below and 12 above. Then last in this little area is this button for metering. If I turn this off, the graphical representation in this top area here turns off. It doesn't bypass the actual compression going on. It just turns off the graphical response. Underneath that, we have two buttons. We have edit all relative and we have auto speed. Edit all relative does exactly what it sounds like. When you have this engaged, and let's say I'm in my low mid frequency here, and I adjust the threshold, you can see in my graph, all of the other bands outside of the low mid also had their low threshold changed. If I change to the mid band, everything is exactly the same. 
if I want to adjust bands individually, I would just turn this off. Maybe I would turn this on to start setting levels and then go in and fine tune after everything is off. But if you wanna just do everything together, you can do it like this. And then auto speed is the attack and recovery times that are gonna be adaptive with auto speed on for the compression that's happening within that band that you're working on. Auto speeds the attack and release times of every band globally. If you wanna be able to adjust the attack and release times per band, you're gonna to wanna to turn this off. If you just want adaptive attack and release times, you can turn this on, but it's for every band. Now we'll move on to the next section here where it displays which band we're controlling right now. And because we don't have edit all relative on, I am just controlling the low mid band right now. And I can change this by either clicking in my top graph or by clicking on any one of these buttons down here. Underneath, we have a display of our compressor settings. We've seen this on the stock compressor plugin before. This is a graph of the knee of this band for the compressor and a gain reduction meter on the side. Then underneath, we have a separate section for the controls of that band's dynamics. We have low threshold and high threshold right on top. Low threshold adjusts the lower limit of dynamics to be processed, and high threshold is the upper limit of dynamics processing. Then underneath that, we see some other very common compressor controls. We have ratio and we have gain. If we take off auto speed, we then have the ability to adjust the attack and release times. And remember, this is per band. If you're going to go ahead and change your attack and release times manually, the attack time goes from one millisecond to 200 milliseconds, and the release goes from four milliseconds to 200 milliseconds. Then our last section has our output meter, and it has a global knee. You cannot adjust the knee per band. This is a global knee for each and every band. You have your overall output gain makeup or reduction. So you can do individual band makeup gain, or you can just do makeup gain on everything going through. And then you also have a mix knob here. So if you kind of slam things a little bit, but you want to bring back some of the original dynamics, you can roll back the mix knob and do some parallel processing. Okay, so now that we've gone over all of the controls, let's look at some real world examples. One thing that I use multiband dynamics for a fair amount is with heavy distorted guitars. When they do palm mute chugs, there's a lot of low mid buildup that happens. And multiband dynamics is a great way to get rid of some of that extra mud that comes with some of those chuggy guitars. So I have this song here. We've worked with this one before. It's yesterday. There's a lot of heavy guitars and I'm gonna jump to the end here where there are some chugs going on. I'm just going to put this multiband dynamics on my entire bus and I have it after everything else. And here's all of my settings that I worked on before and I think sounds pretty good. It just does a little bit of reduction and that's all I really needed. Whenever those chugs come in, they get real muddy and I just want to like squeeze them down and control them a little bit more. So what I did is I bypassed every other band. So I only have the low mids and the high mids going on. I found something else that I wanted to control with some multiband. So instead of opening another instance, I just opened up the band of high mids. Right now, we're gonna concentrate on the low mids. So I'm just gonna bypass this one for now. Looking at the controls that I have going on for the low mids, it looks extreme, but when you really hone in on the frequencies and the areas where you want the compression to happen, it's okay to have a little bit more of an extreme setting. So let's take a listen to these guitars. I'm gonna bypass this first and you'll hear what I'm talking about. Listen to the low mid chug of these guitars when they're palm muted. So I soloed it halfway through and you can hear when they're doing just the fast, heavy chugs, there's a little bit of buildup and I just want to control that. It, it's a flood of frequencies that I just want to retain a little bit. So there's a reason that I also played it from the end of the chorus into this little breakdown part at the end is to show you that 
using multiband dynamics and adjusting your settings is only going to affect the area where you want. When he's doing big open chords, it's not doing any processing. But when he starts doing those palm mutes, that's when the compression comes in because that's the buildup of frequencies that I want to control. So I'm going to take this out of bypass and I'm going to leave it in solo. And let's take a listen. So I made the settings very extreme during that. Let's find something that will work when the chugs are happening, but not during the chords. So you can see I've refined in, and if I really needed to, what I can do is I can solo this band, and then when I hit play, it's gonna let you listen to just this band, so you can adjust those crossover frequencies to really hone in on the areas you wanna control. Keep in mind, when you're moving these crossovers, it does affect both what's to the left and right of it. So you can see my low section, which is bypassed, but if it wasn't, would be affecting everything below 200 hertz. Now let's switch over to the high mid bands that I had on earlier, but bypassed for a little bit, and listen to what it's actually doing. Uh, first, we're gonna solo it so we can hear which area we're working with. So it is a lot of the presence of the guitar, but I want to retain some of the movement that's going on and just kind of control it a little. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it out of solo, listen to it with bypass on, and then drop it back in. So it really controlled the presence of the guitar there. So now let's take a look at another example of using multiband dynamics. I'm actually just going to switch over to my bass bus. And what I want done here is I want to control all of my low end. I like a nice, solid, and steady low end. I don't want the changing of notes to really adjust the feel of the thump of the bass guitar. So what we can do is use multiband dynamics to squish it kind of hard, but use the makeup gain to put it where we want it so that we can feel it the whole song through. Let's bypass it first and we'll also listen to the bass in context and we'll solo it. And now we'll put multiband dynamics in and we'll crush that low end. So you're able to really hone in on the low end of the bass guitar. I messed with some settings very quickly, but what you can do is solo the band and listen to what's going on. With a little more refinement, you can really make a nice solid low end of your bass guitar and sit it with the top end presence. This way it's nice and solid all the way through. 
one last example of using multiband dynamics can be on your mix bus. This is something you're going to want to play lightly, though, because using this on your mix bus can kind of really squash your mix. But with the presets made by PreSonus, some of these are actually really nice. There's a lot of options in here, too. There's an entire mastering folder, there's a mixing folder, and there's just a generic tool that they came up with and they couldn't really figure out which folder to put it into, but that's okay. We won't fault them for it. Because this is on our mix bus, I'm actually just gonna go to master. And one that I was playing with before are these two right here, louder really and louder slightly. Louder some did uh, some, but I liked slightly and really. Those really kind of showed off what the multibands dynamics were doing. So we're gonna start off with slightly, and you can see that this one only uses three bands, where if we go to the next preset, and that keyboard shortcut was option and page up or down. You're able to cycle through your presets with option on a Mac or alt on a PC, option and page up or down. Let's you kind of scroll through the presets of any plugin that you have on. So we're going to start off with louder slightly. And you can see that this only uses three bands of our multiband dynamics, where if we change to really, it uses all five bands, but it's adjusted so that the mid band actually takes up the most area here. And then the low mids and high mids are kind of small. And then the top end and low end are medium-ish, but this is just graphically what it's doing. Let's start off with louder slightly and take a listen to what it's doing to our mix. I'm going to bypass it and then drop it in. I'm also going to go back further in the song so that we have more to listen to. So obviously it's making it louder and this is slightly louder where it did have a good DB increase in the overall mix. Now let's try really and take a listen to what's going on with this one. We'll start with the bypassed again. As we can see here on the top end, it has a plus 10 dB makeup gain, and it really wasn't doing a lot of compression at all. Most of these bands, to make it louder, are just pushing the gain a little bit more. There is some dynamics processing that is going on, but this is really more so just the makeup gain. So there you go, that's all of the controls and just some of the things you can do with multiband dynamics. Try this on your lead vocal. Instead of using an EQ to find like a resonant note that kind of really jumps out at you, you can use a multiband dynamic to just squeeze that note whenever that singer is singing it. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com and if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.